guys, I am Shripti, a very fair educator on an academy. I am a final year computer science engineering student. In this particular lesson, I am going to talk about the protocols and the standards that are often utilized with respect to computer networks. So do watch this video, share it with your friends and like it and drop by your comments for your queries and your feedback. Don't forget to follow me on the an academy platform. Thank you. Hey guys, welcome to lesson number 7 which is going to be on protocols and standards. We have used these two words so much in this entire course, I felt it's high time that I give a background on this as well. I am Tripti, a very fair educator on an academy. I am a final year computer science engineering student. I live in Bangalore and am completely in love with this city. When I'm not coding, you can always find me sketching. So this is our agenda for today. We define two widely used terms, protocols and standards. First we define the protocol which is synonymous with rule. Then we discuss standards which are agreed upon rules. Next we will talk about the organizations that set these standards. And in the end we will know a little about the internet standards. So let's start the lesson. In computer networks, communication occurs between uh, entities in different systems, right? Uh, so who is an entity? An entity is anything capable of sending or receiving the information. However, two entities cannot simply send bit streams to each other and expect to be understood, right? For communication to occur, the entities must agree on a protocol. So a protocol is a set of rules that govern data communications. A protocol defines what is communicated, how it is communicated and when it is communicated. The key elements of protocol are syntax, semantics and timing, right? So let's learn about these in detail. You can get a question like what is a protocol and what are its key elements. So the first one is syntax. The term syntax refers to the structure or the format of the data, which means the order in which the data is presented. For example, a simple protocol might expect the first 8 bits of the data to be the address of the sender and the second 8 bits to be the address of the receiver and the rest of the stream to be the message itself. So if the parties follow this protocol on receiving the packet, they can easily figure out the sender's address and the message, right? Next is the semantics. So the word semantics refers to the meaning of each section of bits. What does that mean exactly? How is a particular pattern to be interpreted and what action is to be taken based on that interpretation? All this is answered by semantics. For example, does an address identify the route to be taken or the final destination of the message? In order to answer these questions, semantics are necessary. Next, a key element is timing. So the term timing refers to two characteristics. Uh, first is when the data should be sent and second is how fast they can be sent. For example, if a sender produces data at 100 Mbps but the receiver can process the data at only 1 Mbps, the transmission will overload the receiver and a lot of data will be lost or packets might get dropped, right? Next, we have the standards. So standards are essential in creating and maintaining an open and competitive market for equipment manufacturers. Standards provide guidelines to manufacturers, vendors, government agencies and other service providers. So uh, this ensures the kind of interconnectivity that is necessary in today's marketplace and in international communications as well. So data communication standards fall into two categories. First is the de facto and second is the de jure. So de facto means by fact or by convention and de jure means by law or by regulation. So let's see what are these. In de facto, standards that have not been approved by an organized body but have been adopted as standards through widespread use are the de facto standards, right? De facto standards are often established originally by manufacturers who wish to define the functionality of a new product or technology. Whereas the de jure are the standards that have been legislated by an officially recognized body, right? So for example, 
uh, de facto uh, would be your QWERTY keyboard layout, right? The standard pattern is to use the Latin based alphabets. Now this pattern is not officially recognized by anybody, by anybody but it is a standard that is widely accepted, right? So standards are uh, developed through the cooperation of standard uh, standards creation committees, forums and government regulatory agencies, right? So here on the screen you can see a couple of organizations that uh, contribute to the development of the standards. So first is the ISO which stands for International Organization for Standardization. The ISO is active in developing cooperation in the realms of scientific, technological and economic activity. The United Nations formed this committee which was devoted to the research and establishment of standards for telecommunication in general and for phone and data systems in particular. Next we also have uh, ANSI, right? So ANSI is a completely private non-profit corporation and it is not affiliated with the US federal government. However, all ANSI activities are undertaken for the welfare of the United States and its citizens are given primary importance. Now all engineering students must have heard of Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers which is IEEE. The Institute of Electro uh, Electrical and Electronics Engineers is the largest professional engineering society in the world. It aims to advance theory, creativity and product quality in the fields of electrical engineering, electronics and radio as well as in all related branches of engineering. So these are the four main organizations, right? You have ISO, which... Uh, which works in the realms of scientific, technological and economic activities. Then you have ITUT, right, which was formed by United Nations and is devoted to the research and establishment of standards for telecommunication and phone in particular. You also have ANSI, which is a completely private and non-profit organization, but it gives importance to the welfare of United States and the citizens. We have IEEE, which is the largest professional engineering society in the world. We also have forums and regulatory agencies that uh, help in uh, forming the standards, right? So uh, what are forums? So telecommunications technology development is moving faster than the ability of the standards committees to ratify the standard, right? So to accommodate the need for working models and agreements and to facilitate the standardization process, Many special interest groups have developed forums made up of representatives from interested corporations. The forums work with universities and users to test, evaluate and standardize new technologies. And then the forums present their conclusion to the standard bodies, right? So uh, forums can be considered as a medium, right? The middleman. We also have re uh, regulatory agencies, so all communications technology is subject to regulation by government agencies such as the Federal Communications Commission which is FCC in the United States. The purpose of these agencies is to protect the public interest by regulating the radio, television and wire and cable communications. The FCC has authority over interstate and international commerce as it relates to communications. Next, let, uh, let's uh, look at inter internet standards, right? So an internet standard is a thoroughly tested specification that is useful and followed by those who work with the internet, right? And inter uh, so this, uh, there is a strict procedure by which a specification attains internet standard status, right? So how does that happen? A specification begins as an internet draft. So your internet draft is a working document by working document, I mean any work which is in progress with no official status and a six month lifetime. Upon a recommendation from the internet authorities, a draft may be published as a request for comment, which is RFC. Each RFC is edited, assigned a number and made available to all interested parties. RFCs go uh, through maturity levels and are categorized according to their requirement level. So that's how they finally get the status of internet standard. So I think this is all we need to know about protocols and standards from computer networks point of view. Thank you so much for watching this lesson. 
do like it share it with your friends and comment below for any queries or doubts you can also follow me on unacademy.com slash user slash tripti tanvi for more courses uh, related to computer science thank you